Hey, it's Rich on Plant PE, and today's video is all gonna be look at the different measurements that we can have around the heart rate and the heart itself. So today's video is gonna be about heart rate, stroke volume, and cardiac output. So those three volumes, we need to be able to define them and understand how they actually impact us when we exercise. So let's start with the definitions. So heart rate is defined as how many times the heart can beat in one minute, or the amount of beats the heart can conduct in one minute. Stroke volume, however, is about how much blood is ejected from the heart every single time it beats. So really simply, it's the amount of blood ejected from the heart every beat. Whereas cardiac output is very similar, and it's about how much blood is ejected from the heart every single minute. So cardiac output is defined as the amount of blood ejected from the heart in one minute. Now, the fitter you are, the less fit you are, they're gonna have impacts on all three of those, and that's the next thing that we need to try and have a look at. So, the fitter you are, the lower your resting heart rate will be. You can do a test now and you can have a look at what your resting heart rate would be. So generally, with somewhere between 60 and 80 beats a minute. Now, the fitter you are, the lower that figure will be, the less fit you are, the higher that figure will be. And the reason for that is about the size and the strength of the heart, and it links into those other factors that we've just talked about with stroke volume and cardiac output. So you can do a test now. Let's see if you're as low as some of the real endurance athletes that have got their resting heart rates around about 40 to 50 beats a minute. So why are they so low? Well, the reason is that every single time their heart beats, it's a much more powerful contraction than ours are. So what that means is that more blood is moving every single beat. So essentially, their stroke volume is higher than ours, so therefore the resting heart rate is lower than ours. So the higher the stroke volume, the lower the amount of times the heart needs to beat. So if you're fit, you're gonna have a lower resting heart rate. If you're less fit, you can have a higher resting heart rate kind of makes sense really. So what you've got to then factor that in is then we've got this other component, what we call cardiac output. That's gonna stay the same at rest. So your heart and my heart is gonna move around five to six liters of blood every single minute. Now, if you are fitter, it's gonna do that in less beats because it's moving more blood every time it beats. So the way that we work out cardiac output is that cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate. So think about that then. If you are moving the same amount of blood as Mo Farah, as you know Chris Froome, all these endurance athletes, you've got to think about what the difference is then. So we've got the same cardiac output, but we've got a lower stroke volume. So our heart has to beat more often to move the same amount of blood in one minute. Their heart beats less often because it's a more powerful contraction because they have experienced something we call cardiac hypertrophy. So all the cardiac hypertrophy means is that they've got a bigger and stronger heart because of this idea that the heart is a muscle and that muscle has become larger and stronger. And the way that that's happened is through weeks and weeks and months and months and years and years of training. So that's what we call a long-term effect of exercise. Now, when we're exercising, the difference between us and those athletes is that, yes, they've got a, they've got a much stronger heart, it's way more efficient than ours, but they've also got a bigger capacity. So if you think about their heart rate at rest is let's say 50 beats a minute, and ours is 80 beats a minute, already they've got 30 beats on us that they can use when they start exercising. So that means that they then have a much larger capacity to work in. And that's what they, they're gonna be using. They're gonna be utilizing this big powerful heart and the fact that their heart can beat more often than ours for the difference between rest and when they're working. So let's say that we are both working at, I don't know, 180 beats a minute, which is pretty high. My, my resting heart rate was 80, it's only increased by 100. If you have your resting heart rate at, let's say, 50, and you've gone to 180, you've got 130 beats a minute to work with. So what that means is that they're gonna have a higher maximal cardiac output because they've got a stronger heart and they've got more beats to play with, essentially. So when you uh, look at the exam questions and you see things like define, we need to define those ones. We also need to then try and analyze 
why that might be an indication of someone's level of fit. So that's where we need to know those figures. And that's why we need to think about this idea of, you know, at rest, we've got maybe five to six liters of blood going around the body. When we exercise, that's gonna be increased. And the fact that our heart rates are gonna reflect that, will be able to show us very quickly who's fitter and who's less fit. And also maybe who can stay working in that aerobic threshold for longer and who maybe has to be anaerobic because of the amount of times the heart is beating. So just a few things to think about today, and then uh, that should we hopefully use in your exam. So this would be a paper one topic. Those year 11s who were taking exams this year, it's something that tends to come up quite often when we look at, um, at those sort of paper one topics around the cardiovascular system. So if you are new to the channel, guys, make sure you like and subscribe. Um, there are gonna be some live um, revision sessions coming around the exam period. Um, I'm also on Instagram. I'm TikTok, but not very regularly, um, but also check us out on Facebook and things like that. So I'm pretty much everywhere, but make sure on here you like and subscribe because that is the most important thing so you don't miss out on any future videos. Cheers guys, and I'll see you very, very soon.